so sorry about missing that vlog last week. We still don't have the video from the production team, but today is gonna be all about this guy right here, the one and only Nolan Gasper! <laughs> Kicking it with a badass. Yo! Nolan is a three-time Olympian and the last American to be on the podium in slalom. 21 years old, Doug, he continues to surprise and impress. Nolan Casper, no difficulty for the 21-year-old. That was savage. He's got the lead. What? What? By a full second? Nolan Casper. Oh, so we're gonna ask him a bunch of questions about retirement over the next few days. We're just kind of ripping around with them and having fun. And I'm living on your couch. Yeah, absolutely. You know, always, always welcome to have friends on the couch. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so what's it like, dude? It's very different, you know? Now I sit in an office for 11 hours a day. It's, it's nice to get a little break and come to Beaver Creek and watch the races. How old are you? 29. And are you old in this sport? No, I mean, you look at it, I think the top 30 in the slalom right now, the average age is 30, so. so I retired due to a combination of things. You know, I just I just felt ready. I remember talking with Mike Janik when he retired and he said, you know, I just I just kind of felt it, I knew and for me, getting into March, it was I was ready for a new challenge, and given my injuries and being relatively healthy, I thought time to time to transition to new goals. And, and now uh, I'm pursuing something that's that's another big challenge for me. It's it's tough because I go from being an expert at something to an absolute beginner. But I think a lot of the the traits and the skills that I've learned skiing are transferable in the business world. And I think getting to a high level in anything takes a lot of determination and being able to stay motivated when things aren't going going well or going right and you know from what I've seen so far on my job it's, it's some of the, the same things from a characteristic standpoint it's, it's hard to teach those things and spending my whole life ski racing it, it really honed those skills for me and you know hopefully it's going to be a successful transition but only time will tell. <laughs> I have faith in you. Thank you. Tell me about tell me about the ski team cutting the slalom team. Yeah, so I feel like this is a big part of the story. No, it's definitely a big part. I mean, so the U.S. ski team cut the entire slalom guys. That's four guys that were scoring points on World Cup right at the end of last season. When you get put into a situation where you kind of have to go and, and do your own way and you don't get the support, definitely makes it harder to to pull the trigger, especially when I've come back from so many injuries and. I finished last year relatively healthy, so I'd like to walk when I'm older. Um, <laughs> I'd like to walk when you're older. <laughs> it'd be fun to be able to, to walk around, and um, <laughs> so that goes into it, like being healthy, but you know, I, I would have kept skiing if I was in a situation that I could have been successful, and there wasn't really a situation I felt that, that, that I could be successful, so um, that, a little bit of motivation, being healthy, uh, great job market right now, um, so I think, uh, for a lot of practical and, and, and other reasons, it made sense. Going from being a professional ski racer to working at a private equity firm in New York City, um, I do try and get outside in the summer and fall and, and bike around Central Park. <laughs> That's about the only nature I get. Like, tell me about when you made a big jump in your skiing, like qualifying for Levy World Cup. Yeah, the first couple years on the team, I was kind of, I was doing pretty well, but nothing, nothing outstanding. And um, I had the opportunity to race my first World Cup in Levy in 2009. And leading into that, we had a training camp, and it was Bodie Miller, Ted Ligeti. Jimmy Cochran and Tim Jilloff, and these guys are all all have been scoring points. Ted Ted was ripping and slalom that year. Bodie was ripping and slalom that year, and just spending those couple weeks, even though the race didn't go as well as I'd hoped, I came back to the U.S. to do Norams, and it was a huge boost, one to my confidence, two to my skills, because I had someone to chase around, and um, it really made a difference. And I ended up scoring in my first, my next World Cup at Kitzbühel, scoring in Schladming, and, and qualifying for the Olympics. So. Um, that was an awesome year when you just started killing it. Absolutely, and that, you kind of ran into the next year and ended up finishing the year with a podium. So it was uh, kind of caught fire for those two years, but I really think the biggest thing was getting that exposure to the faster guys and, and being pushed daily in, in training. And 
having someone to chase. Awesome, man. It's so important. And man, it's like so windy up here now. We might not hear any of this. That's all right. <laughs> And uh, go take some more runs. Absolutely. And uh, some groomers to be shredded. Yes. And uh, I'm gonna try and scare myself a bit by just absolutely sending it down these down these trails. <laughs> Skate, Snowbird, Utah, I guess. <laughs> Favorite moment as a ski racer? Uh, Schlabney Nice Long when I qualified for my first Olympics. Got the call right after the race, so. Um, going to Vancouver. Going to Vancouver. Favorite roommate? Tommy Ford. Worst roommate? Definitely Warner Nickerson. <laughs> totally, thanks for letting me stay here. Favorite ski coach? Joshua Yoshi Applegate. Favorite ski coach coming up? Daryl Gray. Favorite meal? Ooh, on the road home where? On the road. Schnitzel with boiled potatoes and ketchup. A lot of ketchup because they don't give you ketchup over there. And then what's next for you as far as skiing? Well, we got the Pro Tour this year, World Pro Ski Tour. So you're really tra you're training for this? Absolutely. We've got about nine weeks, I think. Yeah, nine weeks now. Last year I was the overall tour champion. So I uh, got to try and defend my title against the likes of a Michael Ankeny, Dave Chudunsky, Mark Angle. Is Chowder going to do it? I'm not sure if Chowder will do it, you know, it's, but I hope so. Good competition is always fun. Competition keeps you going, man. Keeps you going. Awesome to hang with Nolan and subscribe now.